You may not be aware, but in the small house movement, there's a big debate, and that's whether you should go with a tiny house or a schoolie or a renovated school bus. Obviously, I'm shooting this video in my tiny house, so you know which way I went on the debate. But in today's video, you're gonna see an awesome renovated school bus that might just have you thinking that a schoolie is right for you. I'm Annie, and this is Roman, and we live in Little Groundhog. This is Eugene. We named the bus Little Groundhog, mostly because my grandfather was a long haul furniture and freight trucker. And when I was eight years old, I went on the road with him for the first time. We were traveling across the country and he pulled his CB radio down and got on the mic and everybody listen up. I've got a special guest with me all summer long. This is Little Groundhog. And he gave me the name and it stuck. Years ago when I was much younger, um, I ended up homeless for a short period of time and I climbed back out of it, got my stuff together. When I first decided that I wanted to go tiny and then started talking to her about going tiny, my main drive was I never want to be in a position where I'm ever going to be homeless again. And I also wanted to have a vehicle. Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be accessible to a point where if we were in one place and we just wanted to go, in 20 minutes flat, we're driving down the road. So when he was like, I want to live in a school bus, I said, okay, we can live in a cardboard box as long as you're there, oh. I'm home, so we're good. Funny enough, I told a friend of mine, a very good friend of mine, hey, so we're gonna buy a bus and convert it into a tiny house, hung up the phone. She called her mom and said, I think Roman had a stroke. <laughs> now that friend has since, her boyfriend has bought a bus and they are converting it, so. <laughs> So I called her back and I said, hey, did you have a stroke? <laughs> <laughs> Little Groundhog's 36 feet long, 8 feet wide, gives us roughly 266 square feet of living space. This is really it. I wanted everything to be kind of built in. I didn't want to do something that was going to slide around or, you know, you put the brakes on and everything falls. I lucked out with my mom. I got her to actually make my pillows for me, which is a lot of fun. There's that personal touch of just kind of having family be involved in it, which is really cool. Of course, right past the living room, you end up in the kitchen. And she had some very specific things about the kitchen um, that she wanted. Doing dishes in a tiny home. A lot of people struggle with adjusting going from having a dishwasher to not having a dishwasher. My compromise was a big sink. We had to have a big sink so that way I could wash dishes, but also I could leave dishes and not feel as guilty. Let's be honest. <laughs> uh, the second thing that had to take up counter space was, of course, the coffee maker, because you can't you can't live without coffee. Then we have an induction cooktop. Uh, it's a two burner induction cooktop that we love. We've got a toaster convection oven that works just like a regular oven. Does all my cooking and baking needs. Love it. Being able to cook and cook the way you would in a conventional kitchen in a house. We wanted to maintain that, you know, that was important. And I wanted a full-size fridge. I did not want to do an RV fridge. With this side, again, we wanted more storage, and we even have this nifty pull-out cutting drawer. This is Bo. He's got his own name tag. He is our four-month-old Minx tuxedo cat that we adopted from some friends of ours, Geronimo Bus. So he likes to ride up on the dash or sometimes Roman's shoulder. Yep. While we're driving down the road. One of the things that was really important to me was having a full-size shower. Um, I kind of developed this thing a long time ago that when I move into a new place, and I moved a lot as a kid, and when I moved into a new place, nothing, it never felt like home until I could actually take a shower in it. This was the very last thing that we put in the rig and probably should have been the first thing we put in it was so hard to get it in the the lines across the top getting those things cut was really kind of a challenge and then you know figuring out the wheel well this right here that's a lot of fun um and people ask me all the time can you actually sit in there and, you know and i can it's it's really comfortable and we did the uh the kind of faux stained glass on the windows um, just to add that little extra level of privacy when you're in here. We get asked a lot as well, is it a composting toilet? Because it looks like a composting toilet. And it's actually not. It's the Porta Potty by Thetford. 
I think the first festival we went to, we didn't actually have the right. closet doors on the front of it. She loves stickers. Um, we do the sticker swaps with everybody all the time and wanted a place to put them, but it not also be like, you know, this big kind of menagerie of, of mess <laughs> out in the middle of the bus. So she put them all on the inside. When we actually moved into the bus, we, we pared down a lot um, and kind of organized, okay, this is what we can take. And this is what we might have to throw away. And we got everything that we had all went in here. And we didn't lose out on any of our clothing, which was kind of fun. I didn't think you could put that much in a closet. When we first started building the bus, I wanted to go more of a blue kind of feel, right? Teals, blues, things like that. And she, with Disney and Mickey and Minnie and all that kind of stuff, that color palette really spoke to her and she loved this. So we decided to kind of change that. So the reds, the crimsons, the black and whites, the grays. My mom had this <laughs> kind of one demand. If I'm gonna come over to your house, I don't wanna feel like I'm in a cigar tube. And so she said, make sure you keep windows. So when you're sitting down, the windows bring all of that kind of big space into your world. Even though the wall physically stops here, you feel like you're in a much, much bigger space. I didn't originally put this in and it was a big deal for her because we use this as storage space. I wanted to make sure that she could get in here so this is our vanity area. This is actually over a wheel well, and we really struggled on what to do with this space that wasn't just a box over the wheel well. So we ended up making vanity. And then we flip over to the other side. This is one of two TVs that we have. It's the smaller of the two. With us going tiny, it wasn't a sacrifice of going from modern conveniences and having our Xbox and all of our electronics we have two TVs. I've never seen another one that has two. We wanted to have a place to work, a uh, place to play, a place to eat, that kind of thing. And I wanted a table, but I didn't want to do the kind of standard dinette. So we did a, a fold-up table. You know, pull up a chair. We both eat dinner here sometimes, or I use it as kind of my office desk. And it really convenient for just kind of holds out of the way and you have a lot more space in the bus. We have storage in our ottoman that was bought this way and then we also built in storage in our couch. A lot of people ask us if our couch folds out to a bed but it does not. However it's seven foot long so anybody could sleep on it and if we really really need the extra space if we have friends that want to stay over we have a twin air mattress that we can inflate that sits right here in this space. in February of 2018, so we're coming up on our year anniversary. The flexibility of having this is tremendous. Don't not do something because you're afraid. Mm -hmm. Get in there and get involved. A lot of people look for that excuse not to do it. Find that reason to do it. Make sure you comment below which you prefer, a tiny house or a school bus, and subscribe to see more tiny house and travel videos.